there's things that happen like in front of our own human eyes that we we never see that are totally invisible to us. Speeds on the internet are much faster than speeds in real life most of the time. Anyways, we want fast to mean something that's immediate. Most shoots, you have a pretty clear picture of what you're gonna see and what you're gonna get. I think every step along the way, we had we weren't sure what we're gonna see. We are truly running experiments, which is really exciting and. Uh... <laughs> and sometimes they fail miserably, sometimes they surprise and delight us. We needed to somehow benchmark what, what Chromefast was, and we wanted to benchmark it against some things that people knew were going to be fast. <laughs> 2,700 frames per second. Okay, when you capture something, a page downloading at 2,700 frames per second, and trying to get the shot of a page loading at the same time as potatoes are flying across the screen. I, I mean... And the fact that it took 51 different takes to get the potato gun to work just the way we wanted it to. I think we've moved to the Idaho potato at this point. They're pretty good for uh, launching through a grater at high speeds. This is our original gun, but it couldn't fit in frame. We rearranged it. Fires in the other direction. Uh, the challenge has been to really measure these things for real and capture that on film. So we have to invent ways to set them off uh, at the right time. The trigger in this one is the boot falling from the top of this frame. The double bass pedal hits the mouse, which clicks chrome, and then also hits the keytar key at the same time. Hits the uh, drum, shoots the paint into the ear. That's corn syrup mixed with acrylic paint to get the right consistency to stay together when it's aloft. What's the right frequency, what's the right volume, the right kind of speaker, the right viscosity and density of the, the paint itself. We played around with a lot of things to set it off. I mean, just technically, what could you hit, hit quickly to make a, you know, a blast? And then along came the keytar, and everything changed from there on. We didn't want to keep it polished and like looking clean and pristine. We wanted to feel sort of the inventiveness of the experiments. So it's not so much lab coats, it's more having fun and, and blowing things up and stuff. This is the model SG10 rotary spark gap Tesla coil. Electricity is lazy, it always wants to go to the nearest grounded object, so we're going to ground the pirate ship. The path to ground is through this wire to this ground right back here. What we've added is what's called the corona point. That becomes a spout that the electricity is going to flow off of. We want to have big thick arcs, so I've put two close together so we can kind of have them laid up on top of each other and look thicker on film. So we're going to end up being about 4.2 million volts per arc, plus you have to take into account that. The arc we're looking at isn't only one arc, it's multiple arcs stacked on top of each other very densely that you, with a naked eye, can't see. Oh, man! Before we do anything with the Tesla coil, we're going to clear the area. Everyone is going to stay behind the human line. I mean, the fact that we have a pyrotechnics expert, a ballistics expert, and a Tesla coil expert on set, um, that's exciting rather than saying, oh, well, we can fix that later. There's not been a lot of you can fix that later about this shoot, which is the dedication of the team to actually getting it really right in camera, genuinely. And so when you really get to, like, sit back and watch it just evolve in front of you, it's amazing. I mean, it's really, you know, you, you don't, we don't get to do that on a regular basis. Three, two, one.